Hi everybody, welcome to my movie as kind of a review of how shadow plots help us find directions. And I want to go over a couple of previous things we've known. I've asked you this question a couple times, but one of the time I said, hey, you know, if we have a gnomon right there, I'm going to use the X to mark that, and we know that that's making the shadow point right there, where does the light source or the sun have to be to make that point? Well, where it's got to be is it's got to be in a straight line opposite the gnomon. So it's got to be somewhere out here. Now, it could be right here, and it could be right here. We know that we can't tell the distance of the light source, but we sure can tell its position in the sky. It's got to be directly opposite that. Now, I'm going to go to what we now know about shadow plots. Shadow plots, we found out that our local noon line always makes a pointer to true north. And once you know that it makes a pointer to true north, then we can get our south line in, our west line, and our east line. It makes a compass rose where our gnomon is right in the middle. And again, think of this working the same way. So what can this tell us about the sun? Well, let me make an ecliptic right here because we know that on the ecliptic, all ecliptics make this kind of arching shape. What we really want to know is we want to know where is the sun at during the morning, sun up, sundown, and midday. Okay? And we can get that from this chart right here. Now, on this one, midday is really simple. If this shadow is pointing at north right at local noon, then the sun has got to be directly opposite that, again, like this drawing I showed, which means the sun is directly south. And it's always directly south at local noon where we live. Doesn't matter what time of the year it is, and you'll see another example of that in a minute. Now, the key is, where is it at during the morning and evening? Now, that one's a little trickier because we know that we can't make a point on a shadow plot right at sunup and sundown. But what we can say is that wherever sunup and sundown was, it was somewhere out here or somewhere over here. It's going to follow the trend of the line. And you'll see that it won't make any difference which of these dots I use on the next thing we're going to do. But if I want to basically know where sunup is, as long as I know that it's somewhere out here, I can put my ruler on here. I can make a direct line to the gnomon, and I would know that the sun was somewhere over in that area. It might shift a little bit, but it's not going to shift much. And this part of the sky is the southeastern, <coughs> excuse me, portion of the sky. So we have sunrise in the southeast. <coughs> Conversely, our sun over in this direction could be in any of these spots. It's not going to hugely change where the sun is at over here. And so we know the sun's going to be in this area at sunset, and that is the southwest part of the sky. So even though we can't make a mark at sunup or sundown, it really doesn't matter if we just follow the trend in the line where it would be if we had it. It puts the sun in these two positions directly opposite the gnomon of these positions. And that gives us our ecliptic directions for sunup, midday, solar noon, and sundown. And we can do that with every season. The last one is kind of tricky. So now we'll look at summer and how differently this plays out. Again, I'm going to make a little picture of our ecliptic. What I'm really wanting to know, it has the same shape all the time. I want to know where is the sun at sunup, where is it at midday, where is it at sundown? And again, we don't have shadow points at sunup and sundown, but we know at sundown they were somewhere out here because that follows the train of the line. Uh, and over here, they I can't even put them on the page. They'd be somewhere out this direction, but it really doesn't matter for finding where the sun's at. The first one is easy. Once again, at local noon, we know that the sun points directly at the North Pole. So now we have our South Pole here, and that means the sun is directly opposite the shadow. So the sun is in the south at local noon. 
Now, look how much this changes from our winter one we just did. We know that our sunup is somewhere down here, which means that it's making a shadow somewhere down in this direction to follow the line, which means the sun's got to be right up over here somewhere. It may again shift around, but only a couple degrees. And that means our sun up now is in the northeast. This is very different than in the wintertime. And conversely, if I take any of these, now we can kind of see them as our sunset points, I cross the gnomon, straight line. The sun had to have been up here to make those lines, to make that straight line, and that is in the northwest. So a very different sunup and sundown point in winter. Now, spring and fall are the tricky ones because this doesn't work well on spring and fall because spring and fall basically makes a straight line. And if you just do what I did on the previous shadow plots, it doesn't work. So here we're going to use an extrapolation. And that is, notice in the winter, we rose in the southeast and we set in the southwest. And the summer, we're kind of on the opposite side of that, raising in the northeast and setting in the northwest. Well, right between those two times, and again, this doesn't show up well on the shadow plot, right between those two times, we can just extrapolate what they would be. And for the first day of spring and fall, the sun is in the south at local noon because the shadow is going north. The sun rises directly in the east and sets directly in the west. And you've probably heard that the sun goes from east to west. Well, that's only actually true two days a year. It always rises east-ish and always sets west-ish, but only on two days does it rise in the east and set in the west. And that is on the first day of spring or fall. Again, this doesn't show up well here because this paper is not long enough. If I could make a long enough paper, it would, but I can't do it on here. So this one is just the in-between of our other two seasons of summer, which we can do on the shadow plot, and on, if I can find it, winter, which we can do on a shadow plot. Now on your final test, you're going to be asked to fill in these compass directions for one of those seasons. So hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching.